Hello everyone. In this video, I'd like to give you um, a quick overview of mitosis as it would be seen on a microscopy slide in onion root tips. Okay, so we're here we're dealing with plant cells and we're going to be looking at a root tip that you're seeing here. Now, when a plant is growing its roots, those roots are going to have to push their way through soil. And so a typical root has something called a root cap, which is very clearly visible here. So this part right there at the pointer, that's the root cap. You can clearly see that it's very diff different in terms of its uh, cellularity and the staining characteristics compared to this part of the root right here, which is the actual more cellular part of the root where you would find cell division going on. So this area right here that I'm pointing to right now, this is called the root apical meristem. And this is where you would find a lot of mitosis. So having looked at this at the lowest magnification on this microscope, so right now I'm using the 4x objective. So that means that the total magnification that we're looking at right now is 40x. I'm going to switch over to the 10x objective so that we can zoom in on this a little bit. Here we go. And so you can see how we've magnified this substantially. So again, here is the, oh, come on, let's zoom in, let's focus here, okay. So we have the root cap again, and here, this region right there, is the root apical meristem. And so you notice that there's some differences in the appearance of some of these cells here. Some of them kind of look a little bit bigger, some of them look a little bit smaller. There's something going on, and so at this point, I can tell that there's mitosis going on here. Um, but if you don't know what you're looking for exactly, you might just see just some differences and just little dots and squiggles and things. So let's go to higher magnification. So right now we are looking at the 10x objective and with a 10x ocular, we're magnifying this slide by 100 times. We're going to switch to the 40x objective. So we're gonna be looking at a 400 times magnification in total. Okay, so here we are. Let's adjust the focus on this. Here we go. And so right now, what you can see is some of these cells look different than the others. Let me just see if I can maybe increase the contrast in here a little bit. One of the problems with cameras these days is they are so smart that they just adjust automatically for whatever you're trying to do. So. <clears throat> as good as it's going to get. Okay, so what we see on here is a variety of different cells doing different things. Now, right now in the middle here, for example, this at the pointer, the cell at the pointer right now, is a cell that is at interface. So recall from your um, slides and from the lecture that cells have different parts of their cell cycle you have the M phase, which is usually mitosis, sometimes it's meiosis, and you have the interface, kind of the stage in between the division. Um, and so the interphase is subdivided into G1, S, and G2 phases. Um, but under the microscope, you really can't tell the difference very easily between those stages, because even though the amount of DNA doubles during those stages, during interphase, uh, it really doesn't show up very clearly as a big difference under the microscope. So the cells that are undergoing interphase, they kind of all look the same. They have fairly evenly staining nucleus. Uh, there might be some slight differences in terms of the staining, but for the most part, what you're seeing are nuclei that kind of have a very uniform staining to them. So here's another example, nice round nucleus in this case, and a relatively uniform even staining across the whole thing. Now. The way we know that we have exited interphase and gotten into um, M phase is we start to see evidence of, of mitosis, of prophase, okay? And so what we tend to see is that the chromosomes in the nucleus are starting to condense. And so if you look at this nucleus here, for example, what you will see is that the chromatin here is starting to get a little bit more, you know, I guess, lumpy, you could say. It's getting a little bit more granular, so you're starting to see areas that are darker staining and light staining. There's some differences in terms of how things look. Let me show you another example over here. There's a couple of cells in this area here. 
are starting to look very granular. So this cell over here at the pointer and the, its neighbor, they're looking very granular. Okay, so that means that we're seeing condensation of the DNA inside the nucleus. Okay, that DNA is starting to get packaged in something a little bit more, more tightly packed that will be more easy to transport later on. So keep in mind that each one of your cells has about two meters worth of DNA inside. And so if you want to divide this up between two different cells, you're going to have to pull it to two ends in a very small space. And so you need that DNA to be very, very compact. <coughs> and so that's what the condensation accomplishes. The, the condensation allows the DNA to become a bit more easy to transport. Okay, and so what you're seeing, for example, in here is a nucleus that is a little bit more broken apart. And what you're seeing are chromosomes. Okay, so since we're here at 400 X and we're having a really hard time seeing this, let's see if we can zoom in and just go to 1000 X total magnification. Let's focus this and take a look at these cells a little bit more closely. So the nucleus I was looking at is this one over here. And so here you don't see a nice round nucleus anymore. What you do see are individual fairly thick strands and those are the chromosomes. Now, what you might notice is that they don't look like the chromosomes that you're used to seeing in your textbook diagrams. Uh, they don't look like little X's, not in this case, okay? So they're relatively long still and fairly thick sort of structures, but they are small enough to allow your cells to divide them between the two ends. So for example, here, you're seeing them being divided between the two different poles of the cell. What we're looking at here, the stage that we're looking at here is anaphase, and there's another anaphase right here as well. But what you'll notice at the nucleus nearby here, for example, and the one that's oh, over here, is just condensation. The chromatin is just condensing. So what we're seeing here is just condensation. That's prophase. Okay, so this one here, prophase. This one here is a prophase as well. Again, oops, another example of prophase. Again, notice that lots of the other cells are not really doing any mitosis at all. They're just sitting there. This is interphase again, okay? So what you're seeing here is a mixture of things. Now, after prophase, the next stage is metaphase, and what you're seeing here is that the chromosomes have actually been pushed towards the middle. So right now what I'm pointing at, the pointer is pointing at the metaphase plate. So it goes across horizontally in this case. And so what you see is that the chromosomes have been kind of just pushed together uh, into the middle region. Okay, and now because they are long, they still have little strands kind of poking away towards the poles, but the midpoint, the middle part of the chromosomes, the centromeres have been all pushed into the middle and they've been caught by the microtubules and they are getting ready to separate. And then when they do separate, they do this. So that is the anaphase stage. Now that's relatively early in this st stage and this here, we're starting to see that the chromosomes have been separated to opposite poles. So in this cell here, we have two poles with chromosomes at either end. Okay, and so what we're seeing here is an early telophase or a late anaphase. Here's another example where we're seeing these chromosomes starting to kind of form more rounded sort of structures that will become the nuclei. And again, if you look around them, lots of the nuclei around here are just simply doing interphase. Okay, again, here's another example of metaphase. Again, chromosomes are all lined up on the metaphase plate. And down just a little bit below, we can see another cell undergoing anaphase. And around here, <coughs> excuse me, we're seeing two nuclei reforming, and in between them, we start to see the evidence of a cell wall forming between them. So we're looking at telophase, in this case here, the end of telophase, we're looking at cytokinesis, we're looking at the formation of a cell wall between the two newly developed cells. Okay, let's scan around some more, see if we can see any more examples of mitosis. So again, here's another prophase. Oh, here's two cells. There's one cell doing metaphase and another one doing metaphase. Okay, so it's a very 
a good example of one over here actually okay and one thing that you'll notice is that as you sc as I scan around this slide you see cells at different stages so what we have here is a, a nucleus that's kind of above the others so it's kind of overlapping some of the other cells we have more than one cell layer in this case this one's a prophase this one here we're looking at telophase and again lots more prophase up here and oops too far and up here as well more prophase again more telophase up here so as you can see there's a wide variety of things that we're seeing here oh more anaphase two cells doing this one here one right next to it the fact that they're close together is more of a coincidence than anything else so one of the things i want to point out here is that again you're seeing different stages each cell is doing its own thing so when you are looking at a slide and you're trying to figure out is this mitosis or meiosis one of the things that you want to look at is am i seeing the cells doing the same thing or or are different cells doing different things okay so again here's another anaphase right there and just above that we have some more granular nuclei so there's a prophase okay so Again, if you're trying to figure out if this is uh, mitosis or meiosis, look around the different cells nearby. If all the cells are kind of doing their own thing, so here's a cell doing telophase, here's a cell doing anaphase, and in between them we've got a bunch of interphase nuclei, and that prophase, there's a prophase nucleus here, and another anaphase right there, and a metaphase here, or the beginning is a metaphase here, all these different things, cells are doing different things. Each one is doing division at its own rate, or not at its own rate, but it decides when it's going to undergo mitosis. That is mitosis, okay? When you look at a slide of meiosis, what you will tend to see is that cells tend to be synchronized. So cells that are developing near one another tend to do the exact same stage at the same time, okay? So when we look at a slide of meiosis in the next video, you will notice that we tend to see the same thing going on in all the cells that are next to one another. So again, I hope this was helpful to you and I hope you've seen a few examples of the different stages and so you get a better idea of what to look for. And again, just remember that mitosis is a continuum. So you don't have everything looking exactly the same way. Here's another anaphase. Here's another telophase. Here's another anaphase. And another prophase. Okay, so again, mitosis, you have different cells doing different things. You're going to see a lot of interphase and a lot of different stages all at the same time in the same slide. With meiosis, if you're looking at a slide and you're looking at a slide of, a slide of meiotic cells, those meiotic cells will be at the same stage. So they will either all be at prophase 1 or metaphase 1 or anaphase 1. They're not going to be doing prophase 1 and telophase 2 at the same time. You're not going to see two different cells in meiosis at two completely different stages. It's very, very unlikely. Okay, so hopefully this has been useful and you've been able to see a few examples of what we wanted you guys to see. Um, I wish you could have seen this live in the laboratory, but you know this is the best we can do, and I hope this has been useful. Thank you.